if you could please change your name to your name and then your district number. An example can be seen on the screen here where it says McKenna D number one. We hope you all had a happy holiday season. Thank you all for joining us. As an officer team, we are excited to see everyone join us for yet another monthly membership meeting this year. As the 2022-2023 FBLA year continues, it's important to be in preparation for district leadership conferences, which are just around the corner. So our January monthly membership meeting theme is DLC prep. We have a special treat for you guys tonight. Tonight's monthly meeting will be presented by our Colorado FBLA President's Council members. We're excited to see what these outstanding council members have in store for you all. During this meeting, please be as interactive as possible. We want everyone to have a great time and learn something new to take back for use in their own chapters. Before we start off with an icebreaker, I'm going to have all the President's Council's members introduce themselves. Hello everyone, my name is Gabriel Hankins. I am from Vista Beak Preparatory and this year I'll be competing in Accounting One as well as Future Business Leader. Hi everyone, I'm Malia. I am a junior at Rosa High School and I will be competing in Social Media Strategies. Hi guys, I'm Ali Locke, I'm from Haxton High School and I will be competing in Future Business Leader. Hi, I'm Abby Noble, and I am from Platte Valley, and I'll be competing in um, job interview. Hi, I'm Rebecca Santa Cruz. I am a sophomore at Platte Valley High School, and I will be competing in Intro to Parliamentary Procedure, the team event, and test event. Hi, I'm Marie Natu, and I'm from Vista Peak Preparatory. I'm a junior, and this year I'll be competing in Human Resource Management and Future Business Leader. Thank you guys for that. And now I will pass it off as we will start off tonight's meeting with a fun icebreaker. Thank you, McKenna. We have an icebreaker for you laid out tonight. The instructions are pretty easy. You have to look at the picture on the slides and guess the event based on the pictures. Please be interactive and help us make this a fun game for everyone. If there are no questions. I should have used up pay a little. Yeah, my camera's off though. If there are no questions, we'll go ahead and get started. All right, this is the first picture. Does anyone have a guess what event it is? Is it coding and programming? It could be. <laughs> it is. <laughs> And then we'll move on to the second event. Anyone want to guess? You could also type it in the chat if you like. Is it sports entertainment management? Yes, it is. And next event. This one might be tough. Is it broadcast journalism? Pretty close. Is it digital video production? No. Okay, man, can I, you want to re reveal the answer? Okay, next event. This one's pretty straightforward. Is it accounting one or accounting two? Yes, it is. All right. Hence, it's an intro event. Anyone want to call this one? 
Is it intro to business presentation? Yes, it is. <laughs> And I believe this one's the last one. This is marketing. Close, but not there. Pretty close. Is it advertising? Yes, it is. Thank you, Manatsu, for that fun icebreaker. We will now move on to our DLC competition prep presentation. With district conferences just around the corner, it is time to get working on the prep for these conferences. DLC can be daunting, confusing, confusing thing when you're new to FBLA. If this is your first district conference, or even if this is your third or fourth, fourth conference, we hope that this presentation will aid in everyone having a great DLC experience. I'll now pass it off to Rebecca to explain where you can find resources. All right, so I'm going to attempt to share my screen. Um, please let me know if it works. Okay, is it working for you guys? It's working. Okay. So um, if you don't know how to get to the FBLA website, you can just type in FBLA and it should be the first thing to pop up. But this will be the homepage. Um, under divisions, go to FBLA High School and competitive events. And then you can scroll down a little bit and your guidelines are right here. Um, the rating sheets are also right here. So I'll go click on or down here as well. So the rating sheets look like this. Um, and what's fun about this is on the table of contents, you can click on whatever you have um, and it'll jump right to that screen. So that's really helpful. And then if we go to the guidelines as well, same thing um, on the table of contents, click your event and it'll jump right to your guidelines and it'll tell you the guidelines, your topic um, and everything you basically need to know. And then I'll pass it on to Malia. Thank you, Rebecca. Rebecca, um, McKenna, can you go to the FBLA? Or no, that's fine. So um, when you go on the FBLA page, you're gonna see down below where Rebecca was. It's gonna say uh, study packets. You're gonna click on whatever event you have. So let's say you have a presentation. Um, we'll go for my event. So social media strategies. You would click on it, and it's gonna have your event guidelines, your performance, and then your practice exams if you're taking a test. But for mine, it's a presentation. So it's going to talk about what they're expecting when you're presenting, how you should present. And then it's going to have your rating sheets of what they're going to be looking for when you're presenting or when you're doing your role play or when you're taking your test. And now I'll pass it over to Gabe. I don't know why the picture isn't showing up there, but some other great resources that Colorado FBLA offers are some FBLA quizlets for study test takers, so that way you can know all your vocab. On the other hand, we also provide body language TED Talk videos to ensure that when you're in a presentation or role play, you're communicating in a way which your voice isn't. Um, additionally, we also have district-specific guidelines and event lists to make sure that you're following the guidelines, the rules, and regulations that Colorado FBLA has. Something new this year is FBLA tutors provided by the National Secretary's Executive Council. 
It's a video program where national champions give you insight on how they won their events, free resources, as well as what it took for them to win in general, the, the study habits, the mindset which they had. These videos have just been start have just started to be released and will continue to do so on YouTube at FBLA underscore national, Instagram at FBLA NSEC, and then TikTok is soon to come and will be posted on these pages as well. We hope this presentation was helpful for you to get a better understanding of district conference, what to expect, and get excited for DLC. Thank you for that amazing presentation. We really hope that that was helpful for you in this final stretch on your way to DLC. Tonight, we have some guest speakers for you. They have both judged events at the district leadership conferences as well as the state leadership conference. We hope that they can give you some tips and tricks on what judges tend to look for when you are competing. Please feel free to ask them any questions that you have. Our first speaker will be Michelle Locke. Michelle graduated from Paxton High School where she went on to Colorado State University and obtained her degree in business finance. Michelle contains over 15 years of experience in corporate finance, healthcare finance, agricultural finance, and small business finance. Michelle is an FBLA alumna and has been a judge for both district and state leadership conferences. Hello, everyone. Um, I just wanted to start out by saying thank you for the introduction. And um, as a professional, I want you guys to know that you're doing a great job by being involved in FBLA. Um, you learn lifelong skills through the program that will really benefit you um, once you're out of high school and even college um, and just throughout life. So you're all doing a great job. Um, it's really necessary. So, you have changed. Oh, you haven't. You totally haven't changed. <laughs> Can we have everyone go on mute? Thank you. <laughs> Michelle, I think you're muted. Okay, so the things that um, I was asked to talk about things that I look for um, being a judge. And um, so I'm gonna go through some things that as when I judge competition, some things that we are supposed to look for. And um, they're really easy things to kind of miss. And um, so I just wanted to bring it to everybody's attention. One thing that's really easy to make sure that you know the dress code. Um, when we judge events, we're given the dress code and it is, as you tally scores, it is actually on there as far as if the student followed the dress code. And I really, really feel bad when I have to dock points because of something silly like they didn't follow the dress code. So, um, so things that are on the dress code, um, I, I know that you can find the list for, um, for the dress code of what's acceptable. Some things that are not acceptable, according to FBLA, um, is jewelry and visible body piercings other than your ears. We had a lot of girls that had cute little nose piercings, but that actually we had to dock points because it is really on our judging criteria. So um, I just wanna make sure if you have a nose piercing or any other piercing that you make sure and remove that before you go in to present or to be interviewed. <clears throat> Anything denim or flannel, flannel is against the dress code. Shorts are against the dress code, athletic clothing, leggings, pretty much anything that is skin tight is against the dress code. Um, you know, swimmer, obviously, flip flops or casual sandals, 
athletic shoes, industrial work shoes, hiking boots, boat shoes. I know Hey Dudes are very popular now, and that is not um, that is not following the FBLA dress code. So I would suggest really trying to stay away from that and try to find some dress shoes if you can. Um, so they actually say any canvas or fabric shoes are not following dress code. No hats. And then um, no clothing printed with um, anything obscene or illegal. Um, don't wear anything that says anything controversial. And just try to, um, if questionable, don't do it. Uh, just really try hard to look at the dress code and make sure that you're following along with that would be probably my biggest suggestion. I really, really felt bad when people would put so much time and effort into their interviews and their projects. And then that's one of the big things that we have to mark down is if they follow the dress code or not. <clears throat> um, let me see. Tattoos are another thing. If you have a tattoo, try to cover it up. Wear long sleeves or... Um, something that it's so that it is not visible if you are presenting make sure you know your time limits um that's another thing that gets points on as you go oh, time limits so um, try to figure out your project time limits and um, practice and try to stay within those time limits be early to your presentations or your interviews if you can that always um, sometimes we run early and if you're there it really that you've really put time and effort into it and you really care about it so i would suggest if you can be about 10 minutes early from your scheduled um, presentation time or even more whatever your advisors suggest i would also try to recommend um, if I would practice interview questions, you can Google interview questions. Um, so just kind of have some answers prepared for general interview questions. A lot of times interview. I believe that Michelle's internet kicked her off. So while we wait for her to get back on, we'll go ahead and move on to our next speaker. Okay, I don't know. Um, if you... Okay, so our second guest speaker is Dee McDaniel. Um, Oh, is Michelle back on? If she wants to, she can go ahead and finish up what she was saying. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. Um, I just wanted to also say um, a couple more tips. If you're interviewing, or even if you're going into a presentation, it's always, I feel as a judge, a nice introduction state your name give a give a nice handshake um i know last year we had covid and i'm not sure how things will be run this year but last year there was a sign in in front of the interviewers stating whether they felt comfortable doing handshakes or not so um i guess maybe pay attention to that and if they are open to giving a handshake and you feel comfortable as well, I do suggest that, or at least stating your name and acknowledging um, a good introduction and also a proper closing, I would suggest. So when you are finished, thank the judges for their time and um, also maybe follow up with a handshake if everyone is comfortable in their competitions. Okay, so our second speaker is Dee McDaniel. Um, let's see. 
If D participated, D participated in FBLA during high school at Haxton High School. She graduated in 1984 and went to college at Western State College in Gunnison, double majoring in business administration and recreation, which was called club management. Dee spent six years in the Chicago area being an operations manager at a health club before moving back to Colorado and finding a job with a health club management company called Club Sports International. She was employed with them for 25 years as an executive assistant to the CEO and was their event planner until COVID. Dee has judged FBLA district events for at least 10 years and has been on the business ad advisory board for Platte Valley for at least five years. Um, and Dee's here with me right now. Um, do you want me to share your PowerPoint? Sure. You share and PowerPoint. so I'm going to be sharing my screen again because Dee has made a powerful PowerPoint for everyone to see. So again, just let me know if it works. <laughs> Thank you for the introduction, Rebecca. I appreciate that. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. Well, like Michelle said, she hit on um, the, the big high parts as well of that. And if you look at when we get through the uh, PowerPoint presentation, as we get to this uh, different pages, dress code is on there as well. It is really, really hard for judges to have to take off that five points. And that can make a big difference in um, going to state event or not going to the state event. So um, we'll go ahead and go ahead. I'll have her flip it. So what I did is I actually said what was pretty important to me just because I'm also on the business advisory um, board here for Pot Valley. Um, we work with the um, students with some of their events as they prepare for them um, and we help them. So the biggest thing, like Michelle said too, is know your time limits. So I've just pulled up one, it's job interview. You have to know how long you have to prepare or actually make your presentation. But in this, um, your guidelines, it tells you how long your resume can be um, and your cover letter, if it's accepted or not accepted. And then what you do when you go on from there. Um, these are really, really important um, bullet points to follow. That's what they're there for. I know some people just kind of like to pick events because it sounds like a lot of fun. Other people that they know have done it before. Um, but the events are, if you use these, th this is what the judges are looking for. That's how we have to judge because we are required to follow the um, rubric that is given to us as far as judging that. So I don't know how to move it down. <laughs> All right. So I also did the rating sheet with that and I highlighted it. With that, so in order for what we always encourage all of the students at Pot Valley to do is look at your expecta the expectation items, and then you want to go to the exceeds expectations. So you have between 11 and 15 points in that exceeds expectations column, but you have to know that we're looking for that. So um, like you can demonstrate the ability that you know what your event is for. I've judged many of them um, when they're the ones that you have 20 minutes to prepare and they have absolutely no idea what the actual event is that they're even doing. And it's, it's, it's hard for the kids. It's hard for judges. Um, we want you as judges to see all, everybody to succeed in this. So that's the easiest, not the easiest, but it takes a lot of time to look at your event, look at what's required, look at what is ex, um, expected, and then look at what exceeds your expectations because you want the highest points. And if there's a tie, then we have to go back and think through the teams that have per, uh, participated already and figure out who did one more thing better than the other thing. And we can subtract a point here, or add a point here. So um, it, it's key to get all of those exceeds expectations in there. Um, so, and, um, what I've done here is the top things that Michelle hit with the, the dress code, but what I said is like, know your event. And so we talked a little bit about that, know what your requirements are and how much time is allowed and then know what's needed, how many pages, et cetera, et cetera. So I just, um, pulled that out and, um, snipped it and made it a little bit more detailed to that in there, but like so what's known on the left and then what's the column on the right. And then again, I just did that again. And so what I did on this one is I actually pull, I found one 
where there are 10 competencies that could be listed on your left, but to get to your exceeds expectations, you have to have four or more. So just because it's listed in 10, you don't have to have 10, but you wanna make sure that you are hitting a bunch of those in order for us to, to give you that 15. There's a big difference between 15 or 20 points. That's the difference between first and fifth <laughs> on that. So the other thing that I think is super duper important is if you have a partner that's gonna do this presentation with you, make sure that you can do their part as well. Because if something, what if they lose their voice? What if they're really, really sick and then they can't do it? Um, make sure that if you have your presentation slides that they're all uniform. So in judges, we, we also look at um, the formatting, making sure that you're using the same fonts. Um, your headlines are the same fonts. Are they all highlighted? Are they all spelled correctly? Um, there was a difference between first and fifth because there were some spelling errors. So have many, many, many people proof your work for sure. Um, number seven, I, Michelle had a number one, which is actually really truly is number one, is wear your appropriate clothing, right? If you question it, it's probably not appropriate. If you're wondering if it's appropriate, it's not appropriate. So ask somebody that, and don't ask your friends because they're, they're probably going to say it looks great. So <laughs> <laughs> yes, always introduce yourself with the handshake. Again, like Michelle said, last year was a little weird because you could do the handshake or not the handshake. Some you know, allowed fist bumps. I don't know if they're going to do that this year or not. Um, just ask if, if you're okay with offering your hand, offer your hand first and make sure you do a really good introduction. Um, always be confident in your topic. That takes practice, practice, practice. It takes a lot of practice to be confident in, in presenting in front of people that you don't know. So probably one of the best things to do when you're preparing for this is to present in somebody who makes you the most nervous which is probably your mom or dad. <laughs> I know my son hated, 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 hated to present in front of me. And I made him do it a million times until he was comfortable and didn't matter if he was doing it in front of me or anybody else. Um, and so it makes it just a little bit easier for that. Always look the judges in the eyes, always engage with all of them. So there could be two, there could be three. Make sure you're making eye contact with all of them. And the number of the last one is, have fun. It is a lot of good experience. Um, just be confident, but have fun. You guys had plenty of time to prepare for this um, and just enjoy because it's a great experience. FBLA is a great organization. Um, and thank you guys very much. I really appreciate having the opportunity. If you have any questions, just let me know. All right, thank you, Dee, so much again for coming in and talking. Um, pass it on next. Before we uh, move on to the next item of business for tonight, do we have any questions for either of our speakers? And thank you to them. They both did amazing jobs. I know I got some good information that I can take into my own competitive events. I hope you guys did too. So does anybody have any questions for either Dee or Michelle? Um, this could be a question for either one of the speakers or even like state officers or Miss Davies. So where do we stand on open toed shoes now, like open toed heels? Because I know in some cases it's acceptable, but like once we get to the state and national level, how do they feel on open toed heels? Um, open toed shoes are actually allowed now. Um, as long as they are dress shoes and not like just plain sandals to where there's just straps over everything. Um, so as long as they're dress shoes, open toes are fine. I'd also like to ask a question for the previous judges. What was the most memorable presentation or role play? What made it so memorable? Um, I Michelle, guess I go ahead. Say, okay. <laughs> you know, I, I don't really have one specific 
um, student, or I usually have judged um, job interview or outstanding um, business leader. And there's not really one thing that jumps out at me that's something that I really remember. But I do remember the kids that you could tell that they worked hard at it. They had questions ready for almost every interview question, but then they also made it sound genuine. So it didn't sound rehearsed. It sounded like they really put a lot of time and effort into, into their projects and thinking through different scenarios and different things. So um, I guess just you can tell the kids that put a lot of effort into it. And that always stood out to me as something that I, I thought was really neat when you could just tell that they worked really hard at it. Thank you so much. I, I would agree with, I would agree with Michelle as well. You can really tell the kids that have done a lot of prep work with it and they're super confident in their field or their event. Um, if there's props, um, they know what they've done. They don't have to look at their note cards. If they have a team, they work really well as a team together. And it's, those are, they're, those are impressive to watch too. So um, best advice is, is, you know what, practice your event more times than you think you need to do it so that it's, it's just, you can stand up there and do it and you know it like the back of your hand. Thank you. I really appreciate the insight. Does anyone else have any other questions for our speakers tonight? Well, then with that, I will go ahead and pass it on to Kendall, our VP of Progress for our next activity. Hello, everyone. Now that we've got some insight on how to prepare ourselves for districts to be successful and then even onto the state level, we're going to go ahead and go into breakout rooms. In these breakout rooms, we're going to break out um, depending on your district so that you're with your district state officer. Your state officer is going to give you a little rundown, a little recap of what uh, districts is going to look like. You feel free to ask any questions and uh, they're here for any help that they may be able, be able to give you. So now McKenna is going to put us into breakout rooms. All right, I think we've got everybody back from the breakout rooms now. Um, is there anybody that would like to share some good advice, some good tips, tricks, or just anything cool that your district conference has going on this year? This year, D eight. No. Oh, sorry, D eight's doing like a Jeopardy with both like pop culture references as well as FBLA knowledge, and I think that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Adds a little bit of a more fun spin to something that we've heard before. Is there anybody else? Um, our district is having instead of donating the or some of the money that we get for fundraising that we do there to Marshall Dimes like we usually do we found a local um I think it's a soccer facility down in Colfax and basically grouped with them and they're going to be one of our they're going to be our keynote speaker and presenting for one of the um what is it not breakout rooms, but one of the activities. That's really cool. Anybody else want to share? Uh, 
uh, for District 1, for our workshops, they're going to be a lot more interactive and we're going to have more activities um, like doing blankets or just it'll be a lot more hands on. So I'm excited for that. That sounds really cool. Before we move on to our next activity, is there anybody else that would like to share? All right, well, if no, there's nobody else, we will go ahead and move on to our next activity. All right, a little disclaimer, my camera's being weird, so we'll try and see if it glitches out. And if it does, I'll just turn it off. So just so you guys know. But anyways, thank you to the state officers for their DLC updates. We are all very excited about these conferences coming up. We now have a DLC prep activity for you guys. And the activity that I have for you all today is um, finding your why. And it's, oh, my camera's glitching, but okay. <laughs> um, so this activity, I'm going to ask you um, a couple of questions and I want you to think about them. You can write them down if you want and uh, just think about um, them as we go along. So for my first question, why do you make your bed in the mornings? So just take a second, think about it. It's a pretty low key question. And then for my next question I have for you, is why do you get involved? So again, take a second, write it down if you'd like. And then for my third question, so why do you want to join FBLA? And then for my fourth, I have, why do you wanna compete in districts? So now that um, you've thought about these questions, I have a little video for you guys going a little bit more in depth for finding your why. Can you all hear it okay? Okay. Can anybody hear this video? I've gotten a couple texts saying that people cannot. I can't hear it. Okay. I'm going to try something. Let me, somebody let me know if you can hear it after this. And this discovery profoundly changed my view on how I thought the world worked and it even profoundly changed Oh, McKenna, I think when you mute, it mutes the video. So. 
aspiring leaders and organizations in the world, whether it's Apple or Martin Luther King or the Wright brothers, they all think, act, and communicate the exact same way. And it's the complete opposite to everyone else. All I did was codify it. And it's probably the world's simplest idea. I call it the golden circle. Why, how, what? This little idea explains why some organizations and some leaders are able to inspire where others aren't. Let me define the terms really quickly. Every single person, every single organization on the planet knows what they do 100%. Some know how they do it. Whether you call it your differentiating value proposition or your proprietary process or your USP, but very, very few people or organizations know why they do what they do. And by why, I don't mean to make a profit. That's a result. It's always a result. By why, I mean, what's your purpose? What's your cause? What's your belief? Why does your organization exist? Well, as a result, the way we think, the way we act, the way we communicate is from the outside in. It's obvious. We go from the clearest thing to the fuzziest thing. But the inspired leaders and the inspire or inspired organizations, regardless of their size, regardless of their industry, all think, act, and communicate from the inside out. Let me give you an example. I use Apple because they're easy to understand and everybody gets it. If Apple were like everyone else, a marketing message from them might sound like this. We make great computers. They're beautifully designed, simple to use and user-friendly. Wanna buy one? Meh. And that's how most of us communicate. That's how most marketing is done. That's how most sales are done. And that's how most of us communicate interpersonally. We say what we do. We say how we're different or how we better. And we expect some sort of behavior, a purchase, a vote, something like that. Here's our new law firm. Uh, we have the best lawyers with the biggest clients. We have, you know, we always perform for our clients, do business with us. Here's our new car. It gets great gas mileage. It has, you know, leather seats. Buy our car. But it's uninspiring. Here's how Apple actually communicates. Everything we do, we believe in challenging the status quo. We believe in thinking differently. The way we challenge the status quo is by making our products beautifully designed, simple to use, and user-friendly. We just happen to make great computers. Want to buy one? Totally different, right? You're ready to buy a computer from me. All I did was reverse the order of the information. People don't buy what you do, people buy why you do it. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. This explains why every single person in this room is perfectly comfortable buying a computer from Apple. But we're also perfectly comfortable buying an MP3 player from Apple, or a phone from Apple, or a DVR from Apple. But as I said before, Apple's just a computer company. There's nothing that distinguishes them structurally from any of their competitors. Their competitors are all equally qualified to make all of these products. In fact, they tried. A few years ago, Gateway came out with flat screen TVs. They're eminently qualified to make flat screen TVs. They've been making flat screen monitors for years. Nobody bought one. Dell came out with MP3 players and PDAs. And they make great quality products and they can make perfectly well-designed products and nobody bought one. In fact, talking about it now, we can't even imagine buying an MP3 player from Dell. Why would you buy an MP3 player from a computer company? But we do it every day. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. The goal is not to do business with, anybody, with everybody who needs what you have. The goal is to do business with people who believe what you believe. Here's the best part. None of what I'm telling you is my opinion. It's all grounded in the tenets of biology, not psychology, biology. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that video and I hope that you take away um, from this video, even though it was about sales and business presentation, but apply it to your personal life and your competitive live events, even through districts, state, hopefully, um, nationals, and even um, further into your future life.
Well, thank you, Abby, for that video and your cool activity. I thought that was really interesting. So I hope that you guys got something out of that and was able to find your why for what you are doing um, in your life and in FBLA. So before we um, wrap up everything tonight, just a couple of announcements. Make sure that you are staying tuned to all of our social media for all things State Leadership Conference that will be coming up. A lot of this will be coming out after DLCs are over. Um, this includes social media challenge. This includes scholarships, um, all things like that. Oh, excuse me. And most importantly, we want to wish you all good luck at your district leadership conferences. We cannot wait to see how it goes for everybody. And then we cannot wait to have all of our state qualifiers at the state conference in April. So as our January monthly membership meeting comes to an end, I hope everyone learned something that they can take and help preparing themselves for districts. Um, be sure to follow Colorado FBLA on all of our social media platforms at Colorado FBLA um, to stay in tune and up to date with all things. Be sure to check out our Memo Mondays and our website for more information as well. Um, you'll also be able to find state information here. Um, feel free to reach out to any of us state officers via our state emails if you have any questions or would like us to come for a chapter visit. I would like to give a special thanks to our Colorado FBLA President's Council for stepping up and presenting tonight's meeting. We hope you enjoyed having them as much as we all did. We will continue our monthly membership meetings throughout the school year. We hope to see you back here next month in February for our February meeting. Thank you all for coming and the January monthly membership meeting is now adjourned.